Well, it's Chords and Coffee. Good morning, friends. This is the show where I encourage you a little bit. I show you some stuff to play on the guitar. Hopefully this will help your songwriting, help your arrangement, help your guitar playing, and help you help somebody else to go and do likewise. And today, I want to show you about this little revelation I had. I was, um, me and my buddy Mike were sitting and we were uh, looking at a tune somewhere over the rainbow, actually. And... Um, <laughs> Part where there was this little this little moment here um, where he was just going and that shape this shape I mean he might think of it as a D7 right or an A major 7 and it occurred to me and why you need to watch this episode is that with this shape you can play a minor chord you can play a major seven chord. You can play a dominant seven chord and you can play a minor seven flat five or a half diminished chord with one shape. That ought to be a shape we ought to take a look at. That's a lot of return on investment for one shape. But wait, as there always is with chords and coffee, there is in fact more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some highly utilitarian guitar chord grips. And we're going to start with the key of A. Why the key of A? Well, it's the first letter of the alphabet. I don't know if you heard about that or not, but that's a, that's a true natural fact. But also, I did an episode a while back on tension and release chords. And to my recollection, we did that in the key of A. And so I thought this would be a good piggyback off of that. If you were ever watching that video, or if it's the first time you've heard about it, you should go back and watch that video. But we're going to take a look at some chord shapes. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you the shape, and I'm going to move it around. And you might say, well, what's the application? I don't want to waste my time watching this thing if I don't have an immediate application. The most immediate application would be like a minor four thing. So if you're going from a major sound to that minor four and that beautiful haunting way that this is, and I'll show you in a second. Another application, it'd be nice to have some substitutions for dominant seven chord. And again, if all of that that I just said seems foreign to you, you definitely want to check out the video that we did on the tension and release chords. I will put a link in the description. Maybe even do a little video editing magic at this point. Jordan shaking his head, no. Anyway, just imagine if it was though. Wouldn't it be breathtaking? <laughs> it happened right there. Anyway, that being said, let's take a look at this shape. So. Here's where we're going to start. You're going to have your middle finger on the second fret of the D, your index finger on the first fret of the G, and then your ring finger on the second fret of the B. And we're going to play from the A string all the way down, not playing the low E. A major 7. You've heard about it. You love it. You bought the full subscription service. A major 7. Right? Now, if I move this whole shaboing, as I like to say, up one half step, to where now I've got my ring finger on the third fret of the D, index fingers on the second fret of the G, and I said ring finger, middle fingers on the third fret of the D, index fingers on the second fret of the G, ring finger is on the B string of the third fret. So I just moved it up a half step. You can think of that as like, that's like a, a D minor nine over A. What am I gonna do with this, this, this coffee refuse here? Let's see. Let it drip so I can take a sip and I'll teach you a chord grip. Could be a number one hit right there. <laughs> anyway, I got coffee coming. All right, so that's a D minor nine over eight. Now, same chord grip, the same little three, these little three notes here in the middle, this little triad. What would happen if I take my index finger off, like I just lost it, right? And now I've got my ring finger on the third fret of the D. I've got my middle finger on the second fret of the G, and then pinky is on third fret of the B, and now your index finger is going to hit that F on that first fret. So, so what are we talking about? A major 7, D minor 9 over A, 
And if I'm just playing what I'm touching here, that's an F6. If I end up getting that um, E natural involved, I need to think of that as an F major 13 because it's a major seven chord that has a six on it. It's probably the quickest and cleanest way to name that. Then, if I put the G in the bass over this same grip here, that's gonna be my middle finger on the third fret of the low E. Now, index finger's gonna to have to come off and then hit the second fret of the G. And so then now I've got like this, if I play them all, kind of like a, like a G13 sus2 with that A in there. If I don't play the high E, it's just really like a, like a G9, right? And then if I uh, then go to this B minor 7 flat 5, which we've played this chord a million times, but here it comes a million and one index finger on the second fret of the A. And then ring finger is going to be on the third fret of the D, middle finger second fret of the G, pinky is on the third fret of the B. B minor 7 flat 5. So listen to this progression. Isn't that nice that changes keys into this C major 7? All of those chords had in common this little chord grip here that's just moving around. Isn't that interesting? I don't know about you, but the way that my brain thinks about that, and I'll give you the ones in C major here in just a second, but if I can, if that little mathematical equation works there, it has to work everywhere, and that's what we're going to explore is some really cool, really cool chord grips, if I can say it, that are based off that little formula. Turned out good. Normally that's a little too light for me, but that hits the spot. All right, so C major seven. We're gonna do uh, index finger across the third fret. And then we're gonna go uh, from the A to the high E. We're gonna go ring finger on the fifth fret of the D. Middle finger on the fourth fret of the G. And then pinky on the fifth fret of the B. So good old C major seven, you know that chord. And if not, there it is. And then this next one, we're basically gonna do exactly what we were doing here except now we have a bar on it, right? And so we're just moving this guy up. I think there's an old jazz tune called A Child Is Born, and it has that, that kind of... It may even like something like that. Look into it, but it's that same kind of idea. And so in this case, I'm making it's this F, so again, we're just using some basic math here. If when I did this, A major seven to D minor nine over A, the D minor nine is the minor four of the A. So in this C major seven, then this must be the minor four over C. So that's gonna be F minor nine over C. How am I doing it? Ring or index finger stays straight across the third fret from the A to the high E. Ring finger is gonna be now on the sixth the fret of the D, and then middle finger is going to be on the fifth fret of the G, and then pinky is going to be on fret number six of the B. And back to that C major seven. And then, instead of F6, now that we're in this key, we're going to be A flat six. So essentially, leave these guys where they're at, and then now just put your index finger on the fourth fret of the low E. Your uh, ring finger is going to be on the sixth fret of the D. We're skipping the A. Your middle finger is going to be on the fifth fret of the G. Your pinky is going to be on the sixth fret of the B. And then after this guy, you got this B flat nine. Uh, ring and pinky, they don't move. They're, the ring is on the uh, sixth fret of the uh, D string. Pinky is on the sixth fret of the B string. But now middle finger is going to be on the sixth fret of the low E. And then index finger is going to be on the fifth fret of the G, skipping the A altogether. And then now, this D minor, uh, yeah, D minor seven flat five. Again, your um, ring and pinky don't move. Middle finger is on the uh, fifth fret of the G and then index is gonna be on the fifth fret of the A. And 
go back to that C major seven. But what's interesting is that we're, while we're already there, look, this shape, you could move your index finger back to the fourth fret and make a D flat major seven, and then resolve that to C. So that whole thing would be. Isn't that interesting? And again, it's really cool to me how we have this one triad grip that's just moving by a half step up and down. And then we move the bass notes and you get this whole other really cool chord sound with very little mental effort. And if I can do my whole life like that, I might be pretty happy. There's some stuff that requires deep thought and consideration, you should think about it. We won't get into that here on Chords and Coffee, but just know that it's out there. Hey friends, I wanted to tell you first, I have limited availability for private lessons either here in the store at Palin Music in Springfield, Missouri, or via Zoom online. If you're interested in that, give us a call at 417-882-7000. That's 417-882-7000. Or just shoot me an email at Nate White, N-A-T-E-W-H-I-T-E -E, at palinmusic.com. I would love to help everybody I can, but the truth is I have limited availability. So get a hold of me as soon as you can. First come, first serve. Look forward to hearing from you soon. Okay, so that's one chord idea for you. Now, what would happen if we took that same general concept and, hey, stay with me. I saw you looking at that button. Stay with me. All right, what would happen if we took that same general chord concept and instead of this being down here, it was up here. Because it ought to make sense. I mean, it makes sense to me anyway. If I can do it here, then I should be able to do it here. It's the same thing, right? It's just in a different part of the neck. Well, what, am I, what do I mean here? Well, I'm on the ninth fret. I'm on the G, the B, and the high E. And I've just got my finger laid straight across there, right? Because it is the same general idea as this. I've got, let's see. I've got an, um, an E, a G sharp, and a C sharp. I've got an E, G sharp, and a C sharp. It's the exact same chord. And if I move this up a half step, it's the same as this. So everything applies exactly the same way it go. So there's A major seven, that same shape with A in the bass, D minor nine. Now in this case, a minor nine, I'm, I'm missing a note. So I'd have to do this here. So this is just really just D minor. And then back to the, and that's gonna be on the 10th fret with an A in the bass. And then back to this A major seven. And then if I want like a B minor seven flat five, I just put my pinky here on the 10th fret on the E, the B, and the G, and then put my index finger on the seventh fret of the low E. And then if I wanted an F6, I just take my index finger and put it on the eighth fret of the A. And if I want a G9, I just put my middle finger on the 10th fret of the A. And then if I want that A major seven again, I just go back to the ninth fret. So that works on an acoustic guitar way up high like that. It sounds kind of too tiny, but sometimes, especially when you're playing acoustic, you need to have more dynamics and the subtle nuance of that kind of tininess so that when you get down here, that's even bigger, right? It's nice to have. So if that's true, shouldn't I be able to do this same thing with this shape? 100%. So this shape, if we think about this, it's like an A major seven, right? And maybe it, if you're like me, when I see this shape, I often think about a B minor just kind of slid up here. And I'm looking now at this shape here where I've got my Ring finger is on the sixth fret of the D, pinky is on the sixth fret of the G, and then middle finger is on the fifth fret of the B. And I'm playing the high E open and the A open. 
then just sliding that up one to do that D minor 9 thing over A. Now if I want to do this G, I got to stretch back here to get with my index finger on the third fret of the low E and that is very stretchy, but not impossible. And then if I want an F, I just need to rearrange my fingers here because I can't stretch all the way back there. If, if I could, if I could, I'd be in one of them finger stretching exercises like you see in them lumberjack rallies. I'd be the guy with the long finger. You gotta come to Branson to see that, I guess. But anyway, there it is. And then, what I'm gonna do here for this F is I'm gonna put my pinky on the eighth fret of the A, and I'm gonna put my um, seventh fret, or my uh, on the seventh fret, I'm gonna use my middle finger on the D. So pinky on the A, eighth fret, seventh fret, uh, middle finger on the D note, and then ring finger, seventh fret of the G, and then index finger is gonna be on the sixth fret of the B. And then to make B minor seven flat five, I'm gonna go middle finger on the seventh fret of the low E, skipping the A, and then I'm gonna have my ring finger on the seventh fret of the D, pinky of seventh fret of the G, and then index finger is on the sixth fret of the B. And then back to the A major seven. <laughs> was a mess up, but if I do it again, slow enough, it might be okay. So, there's some really cool shapes where you can move around the same shape and get different chord sounds. This is also true of this shape. Five, six, seven, five on the high E, six on the B, and then seven on the G. And in fact, this little shape here, I think I wrote this one down as I was just kind of messing around with these different things. This shape um, really jumped out as like, this is really cool. So index finger on the uh, fifth fret of the D and then pinky's gonna be on the seventh fret of the G. Ring finger is gonna be on the sixth fret of the B and then middle is gonna be on the fifth fret of the high E. It's a really cool way to do a G7. I don't know why that just jumped out me nice. You know, there's something about just sitting with my guitar and moving around these shapes and finding something like that. Like even like on this A major seven, what would happen if you take your, your uh, ring finger off and you've got that open B and that open E? Then slide that up anyway. It's a beautiful chord. And so often, some of the coolest sounds that you encounter on a guitar when you're just playing for fun might be discovered by accident or by moving something around. And when I first started playing, um, and I've got plenty of room to grow, I'm still in a work in process, I'm on the path just the same as you. But something that I was very fortunate is I had some wonderful people in my life that helped me understand is you know, a wrong chord is only wrong in the sense of context. There's always a place for that chord, those collection of notes, to belong and make sense. It might not be useful to us as much as other chords, but there's a place for it, right? And that's a really cool, freeing thing. And I hope that when I'm showing you things like this, it leads your mind to discover, ooh, what could I find? And maybe what could I use that would help me to discover my own unique expression on this instrument? Because folks, that's what we're doing here on Chords and Coffee. We're living life the best we can with the guitar in our hand, trying to encourage one another. And I hope this has been encouraging to you. We do this every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Please fill up the comments section with your thoughts, your comments. Hit that subscribe button. There's a lot of you watching that don't subscribe. I'm looking at you. Hit that subscribe button. 
Hey, we'll see you next week. I appreciate y'all.